There's been a lot of discussion this week around the Sam Kerr case and a lot of opinions offered. But when it all boils down to it, it's going to be decided in a court of law one way or the other. Will Sam Kerr's lawyers succeed in having the case thrown out or dismissed when they go to court in April? Or will it go forward to a trial next year in February? Which means from the incident through to the charging and then the trial, it would have been a two year period. Now, putting all of the opinions aside and all of the different interpretations, the only facts that we really know are quite sparse. So it's best to deal with what the law actually says and where we can go with this case. I've done an interview with the former Director of Public Prosecutions from the UK, Sir Max Hill KC, and I asked him exactly that. Not that he can talk about this specific incident, of course, but in talking about the law and what racially aggravated harassment actually means. Sure. Um, and you know, let me say as we, as we start this discussion that I, you know, I can't talk about a live ongoing case. Um, and I, I know there's interest in a particular case which is live in, in England. I'm not going to talk about that. But I can talk about the legal principles and in in our jurisdiction, England and Wales, and it's you know in common with many other jurisdictions, we have public order legislation. And in our case, that's been on the statute book, passed by our parliament since 1986. And that deals with causing harassment, alarm or distress. That is the, the technical term. And the way in which a person causes harassment, alarm or distress was amended in 1998 by a Crime and Disorder Act to say that if that's what you're doing and you can do that by words or by physical conduct and when you do that you are um, doing it in a way that is racially or religiously aggravated then it's a slightly more serious offence and racial aggravation means that you are in let's say the words you use demonstrating hostility towards another person based on their membership of a racial group. And there are many ways in which that can be committed, but that is the aggravated offence. So it's still a public order offence, but when it comes to um, conviction and then sentence, there can be a slightly more serious sentence. And in that regard, because there can be uh, a slightly more serious um, sentence, how is that determined? Is it a higher that, bar that it has to, to to pass? Well, I think what what happens is that if you imagine causing harassment, alarm, or distress to somebody um, in the non-aggravated standard offence, then the our lower courts, our magistrates' courts, can deal with that very, very often without even considering imprisonment, but they can impose prison sentences up to six months. The difference for the racial or religiously aggravated form of that offence is that, again, that can be dealt with in a whole host of ways, usually in our lower courts, usually in a non-custodial way, but it can, in the most serious cases, go up to our serious uh, Crown Court and a sentence of up to two years can be imposed. So it just gives much more flexibility to courts in how to approach it. And the way they'll approach it is based on the seriousness of the incident itself. So they'll be guided by the facts, which if we're talking about a conviction, they've decided are true facts. And then they will look at all the surrounding circumstances, including, of course, the character of the person who has been found guilty uh, of this offence. In the very worst cases, with many previous convictions for this offence or other offences, you can see that this could pass what we call the custody threshold, and courts will start to think about prison sentences. In other cases, it won't come close to that. It's a conviction which we marked in some lesser way. And I guess, you know, anybody um, sort of looking at any particular case without knowing any of the circumstances, it's impossible to judge. Uh, and it, it's a legal process that needs to take place. But how are these sorts of things investigated? What what would um, police be looking for? What would prosecutors be looking for? Yeah, so in, in, in our jurisdiction, and I don't think it's any different in, in Australia, um, it's the police who investigate, 
it's the prosecution service who prosecutes. So the Crown Prosecution Service, which is relevant here in England and Wales, will wait until the police have completed their investigation. Sometimes they'll come into the CPS for discussion or advice. Other times they'll complete the investigation themselves. That's going to include gathering together as much surrounding evidence as there can be. You know, is this about words or physical conduct? Do we have a witness statement? Do we have, if it involves the police, for example, body-worn video footage? Do we have closed-circuit television footage where there are other people nearby who could hear or might have heard what was said? Do we have an account from them? And then what do we know about the background of the people uh, involved? So all of that is the investigation phase. And the Crown Prosecution Service will then decide whether or not a charge is justified. And the way they do that in every criminal case is always the same. There are two stages to what we call the, the code for, for prosecutors. The first is, is there sufficient evidence to give a reasonable prospect of conviction? So when this case goes to court, is there sufficient for the court to say, yes, this satisfies the element of the offence and we can return a conviction? Called the evidential stage test. If it doesn't pass that test, there'll be no charge. If it does, then the, the prosecutor will go on to what's called the public interest stage, where they will consider surrounding circumstances. Was this in, in public? Well, it's a public order offence. What is the, the level of seriousness? Is it words alone? Is it words and physical conduct? Let's consider the surrounding circumstances of the individual who may be charged, their age, their characteristics, whether they have previous convictions, that sort of thing. And if that passes what's called the public interest test, then the CPS will say, yes, we do think this has to go to court, but that's not a decision by either the police or the prosecutor that the person is guilty. It's only the court that can make that decision. It's just a decision uh, at that stage, at the conclusion of the investigation, that there is enough here for a court to consider, and it goes forward for plea or trial. 